Hello and welcome back to part seven of our Epic Next.js course. In this video, we're going to continue building out our summary application. Today, we're going to take a look how to hook up our delete and update button. But more importantly, if you take a look at our summaries, currently we have one summary. What we wanna make sure is that as a logged in user, you don't have access to anybody's data. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in today's video. But let me show you what I mean. After logging out, let me create another user. Other user, other user at email.com. And we'll say test user for password. When I sign up and go back to summaries, notice how I see all the summaries. If we take a look at Strapi, go to content manager, under summaries, notice that our summary is associated to our test user and not our other user. So we wanna make sure that we lock down our endpoint to make sure that I'm only able to get my summaries that I created. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in this video using our Strapi Route middleware. And as always, we have our complimentary blog post article that you're able to check out for code snippet and more in-depth explanation. But today we're going to take a look at how to use our route middlewares to help us lock down our endpoints to make sure that we only allow specific users only access the account that they are owners of. So I'm super excited for this video, so let's jump right in. Taking a look at our Strapi application, if you look on the content manager and we see our summary, we have our summaries collection type, where we're able to set the relationship to our user. If you go to our settings and under roles, authenticated, in order to get our summaries, we're making a authenticated request. But when we hit our find endpoint, it's going to return all of our summaries and it does not out of the box filter based on our user. And this is where route middleware comes in. A route middleware sits between your request and your access to your controller. So we are able to check in our route middleware to see if the user is logged in or if they're authorized to access certain data or collection types. And we could dictate that logic in our route middleware to tell Strapi either our user is authorized or not authorized to get the data, even though they might be authenticated. And you could read more about it inside of our blog post. But first, we're going to start by setting up our summary update logic. And then afterwards, we will add all the necessary middleware to make sure that only authorized users are able to update or delete their own data. Inside of our front-end application, let's navigate into source, components, under forms, and let's open summarize card form component. Here at the top, you see that we are importing our update summary action and delete summary action, and we haven't added these actions yet. So let's navigate to data action summary actions. So let's navigate to data actions summary actions, and you could find the code snippets in our blog post. So let's go ahead and copy the code for our summary actions and let's go ahead, paste it underneath our create summary action. And if we scroll up, let's close this one down. We have two new actions, action responsible for updating our summaries and an action that is responsible for deleting our summaries. Now that we have these two new actions back in your summary card form, go ahead and uncomment that import. And now let's go ahead and update our summary card form to incorporate these new actions. First thing we're going to do is import our use form state that we're going to use. Since we're using use form state, don't forget to use the use client directive at the top here. Next, right before our summary card form, let's set up our initial state for our form data. We're going to uncomment this code here. Basically, we are binding our item ID to delete summary action, which will be available to us whenever we go to delete a item, we're able to get that bound attribute here via this ID. Next, we're going to use our use form state to get our state from our delete action. And finally, we're going to use form state for our update action, which allows us to have access to our state within our summary actions. So here in this example, 
If there's an error, we're returning this state from our action and we'll be able to access it inside this delete state variable. Now that we have our delete action and update action all hooked up, let's go ahead and update our forms. The first one, we're going to work here on our update form. So let's update this form to use our update action. And if we scroll down, here you could see our delete form. Let's update it to use our delete action. Finally, if something happens, we do want to display our errors. So at the top, let's go ahead and import our strappy error component. And if we scroll to the bottom to our card footer, let's go ahead and use our strappy errors. And we are going to check either our delete state or our update state that's coming from our use form state. And if we have any errors, we're going to go ahead and display them. So before testing our component in our strappy admin, navigate to settings, users permissions, roles, authenticated under summary, and we're going to disable our update and delete and click save. So now if I try to delete a summary, we should have our forbidden message. So we know that our strappy errors are working. So now back in settings, let's go ahead and enable update and delete and click save. So now let's try our update function. I'm gonna say, let's actually go ahead, use this title here. I'm gonna copy it, put it back into site here. Fantastic, and let's delete all this. Let's click update again. Perfect, and in Strapi, we refresh. We could see that this is updated. Go back to our application, go back to summaries. And notice here we still see the old title. So that does not revalidate this or refresh this. So to update this, yeah, I would do a hard refresh, but that's not the functionality we want. So one way to revalidate this route or to tell Next.js that something has changed, we could use revalidate path. You can read more about it in the Next.js documentation. And But what we're going to do is Inside VS Code, navigate to your summary actions.ts file. And here, let's import revalidate path, revalidate path from next cache. And then let's go to our update summary action here. Right before we return the response, we're going to say revalidate path. And we're going to revalidate our, our dashboard summaries route. Perfect. So let's try this again. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this part of the title and let's say delete this here. Perfectly fine. And let's click update summary. And so now when we go back to summary, notice that the title gets revalidated automatically. So if you had the issue where it wasn't refreshing, you could use revalidate path to revalidate certain routes. And finally, if we go back to our summaries, we could go ahead and click delete and it works perfectly fine. So what I want to do, I want to do a couple of things before we finish here to set up the next session. One thing I want to show you here, I am logged in as test user here. So let's create a summary as test user, create summary. Nice. Now that we have our summary, if you take a look under our strappy admin collection types for summaries, we could see that we have this summary by test user, which is me. So now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to go ahead and log out and I'm going to sign in as our other user. And notice we see this summary still. This belongs to our test user, but we're logged in as other user. So this is an issue. Another reason why this is an issue is that this does not belong to other user, but I'm still able to update it. For instance, I go ahead and delete this and click update and I could also delete it, which is not good because that belonged to the test user. So this is not the functionality we want. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in our next video to make sure that even though our user is authenticated, they should only be authorized to update and delete their own content. So I'll see you there.